I'm so delighted to come to you today. Today I want to talk about high reliability organization, how to be a transformational leader in high reliability organization. I am Dr. Joshua Kolawole. I am a global transformational leadership trainer and I want to also introduce to you this book, Transforming the Impossible. You need to read this book. So there's one of the applications of transformational leadership on page 160 where we talked about uh, transformational leadership in high reliability organization. How many of you are working in healthcare setting, in, in pharmaceutical industry, uh, you're working in hazardous environment, um, in nuclear environment, uh, biodefense, uh, war and weapons manufacturing, uh, manufacturing organization, and you understand that the, the significance of a simple decision that is not uh, taken meticulously and, and the consequences are not being evaluated clearly could actually lead to something uh, that could lead to mass destruction. So with, with this, some of us work in an environment where the margin of error has to be very strict. Some are lucky enough, they are fortunate enough to work where the margin of error could be could be wide. But for, for most of us who are leaders in an environment that could lead to catastrophic uh, uh, result when a simple error happens, then you work in high reliability uh, organizations. So I want to just talk to you in a few minutes why you need uh, to have a transformational leadership mindset. i would spoken earlier, if you had uh, been following me, about why you need clear identity as a transformational leader. And why you need that is because you need to have uh, sound values, sound principles that you're actually guiding whatever you're doing with. There must be high ethical standards. Uh, you must sound character, uh, uh, sound character, clarity of your purpose and all these things integrate together with competence. So uh, basically in several literature uh, it's been documented about five uh, classic principles uh, that ensures uh, leadership success in high reliability organization. And I'm going to just uh, run through those five so I would need you to stay with me. The, the first one I will talk about is continuous learning and sensitivity to operations. Uh, that one you, you need to understand that if you're working in, an, in, in a high reliability organization, I had given you the examples earlier, learning is critical and this learning is beyond just learning uh, the direct stuff is about learning both management of people and ma the technical excellence that requires to make the job happen because you would always have to deal with people and relationship and uh, social connectedness and you'd have to deal with the technical expertise required to deliver on the job and so because of this you're not only learning how to be an excellent uh, maybe ICT staff but you're also learning how to be an excellent ICT leader who would leverage um, computer algorithms, uh, different programs to track, to monitor, to, to organize whatever you're doing in, in your workplace. Number two that you need to understand about high reliability organization is continuous improvement and reluctance to simplify. A lot of people want things to be very simple, right? I also want things to be simple. But I understand that some people have to understand complexity and find a way to break it down for us to become simpler, isn't it? That's your role as a transformational leader. So if you're gonna be a leader in high reliability organization, you must be ready to understand complexity. However, your goal is now to break down that complexity and make it simpler for people in different chunks in different departments now you also need to help them understand the integration of all the units so I don't have a staff who is working in the kitchen of an hospital not to understand that there can be an outbreak of infection and he or she can be the one who will spread that infection across all my words because of that I need to let him understand his role and how it integrates with the role of the nurse and how the nurse role integrates with the role of a medical doctor on that surgical table because if you don't have a good surgical nurse and your and, and you don't sterilize your equipment properly, you're going to have um, SSI, uh, that surgical site infection, and once that happens, then it will lead to more direct cost on the patient. The hospital could get sued, the reputation of the hospital could go down the drain, and then it could lead to a citywide national issue. Uh, so just a little gaffe from one segment of a high reliability organization can lead to crisis in the society. Let me talk about the nuclear ex example in Ukraine, uh, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor issue. The issue happened 
uh, such that um, of, of course there was an error uh, uh, error that was undetected and then the nuclear reactor caught fire and before you know it the the old the, the old neighborhood the old city the, the the environment had to be radiated for many years and of course you know the complications of having radiations active in, in the society some would die immediately some would die over time and organisms and even the soil in that environment uh, would have a changed profile so all these are critical factors that you must consider as a person in high reliability organization what's the third thing the third thing is embracing transparency and you must be preoccupied by the mindset that they're can be failure and so when you're preoccupied by that it helps you to think ahead of crisis it helps you to think ahead and then transparency helps me to quickly hone up if i've made a mistake and quickly open up and say there is a near miss here we don't need to do this again so that we can correct it next time so we all need to pay attention to the concept of error near misses and use them as opportunity to learn and to improve rather than considering that we're strong and we are we're invincible no we need to quickly correct whatever near miss or error that we find in our system the next one is open communication and deference to expertise do not forget that expert opinions are to be valued inside from staff with the most germane knowledge are considered above those with higher level of seniority so i could be the i could be the maybe the chief medical director of an hospital but i have a specialist who is in charge of infection control when there is infection crisis when there is um when there's dissemination of infection across the facility i don't need to say because i'm the cmd i need to be the one taking the decision i must defer to the expert the same thing goes to when there is a radiation threat i must call in radiation experts to come and uh, assess the scenario so there is difference to expertise but you must also be in charge to track the way the whole progress is going so at that point it, it leads us to the last point which is accountability and commitment to resilience you must plan ahead prioritize for emergency always you must think that your system is at risk and could fail at any moment and when they occur what are the things you would do to bounce back so you have organizations doing several scanning tests vulnerability scanning tests penetration scanning tests different forms of tests to ensure drills to ensure that they keep testing the strength and their responsiveness and the capacity to bounce back to normal operation if any crisis happen we also live in the world of cyber threats cyber security is a critical issue for nations and 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 for uh, global for systems that want to operate at global level these days if you if you have a data breach the price you may pay may be horrendous and it may even lead to the collapse of your system so as a transformational leader in a high reliability organization my total submission to you is that you should prepare you should prepare and make sure that your system is strengthened enough one to minimize the risk and that's the goal because 10 years of safety with a single five second of disaster will wipe away all the records of the safety so you need to make sure that every day you deploy these five core principles number one which is continuous learning and sensitivity to operation number two continuous improvement and reluctance to simplify things to just assume things are just direct or simple number three embrace transparency and preoccupation with the mindset of things may fail and what can we do number four open communication and deference to expertise and ultimately accountability and commitment to resilience thank you